This entire speech is dedicated to Charlotte. <laughs> Fantastic job. I, of course, am an amputee. What is my favorite restaurant? Ooh. I, I know what it is. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I began a speech last year at the Amputee Coalition of America. And I began this speech by recognizing a very famous person, King Louis XIV. Mm. The speech was in Louisville, Kentucky, which was named after King Louis XIV. And I began by saying, welcome to the Amputee Coalition. We are in Louisville, Kentucky. The founder of Louisville, Kentucky, of course, is Louis XIV who in 1793 became an above-the-shoulder amputee. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is the difference between those two openings? The IHOP that Charlotte so eloquently pointed out, and King Louis XIV. What do you think the difference is? The first one, you engage the audience. Okay. I didn't engage the audience. No, no, no. One. You know what I mean. I'm trying to espionage. Yeah, right. <laughs> you were the subject of your first example. I was yeah. the subject of the first example, yes, sir. <laughs> and Louis the Fourteenth was on on the second. I, I believe in humor more than I believe in telling jokes, and the reason is for when, what Trevor just pointed out is just because of that. I believe humor is self-deprecating and has more of a story feel to it and jokes are more one-liners. So as I tell a joke, I might be going on or going with or going against an individual or a group of people. So think about your favorite comedian and think about the jokes that you might hear on Laugh USA or the Comedy Network. You will see that those jokes are usually directed at a, at a person. Jokes that we heard in, in the early days may have started out a black person, a white person, a Hispanic, and a Jew were all in a bar. Right? Now some of y'all laughing because you probably heard a joke, a joke like that. But usually that's going at a group of people. And so somebody, maybe the general masses, will feel that it's okay for that because you're in this general space of an audience. But somebody's probably going to be offended with inside of that joke. And so if you start off a joke, if you start off with a joke before an audience, what happens is you alienate about 10% to 20% of your, your audience, whereas you will capture the rest of them and get, on, get them on board. If you're trying to develop rapport with that audience, you may have just alienated too many of those individuals. When I look at a person like, um, let's say, Bill Maher, very left-wing person, most of his humor and jokes are directed at either religious entities or Republicans. Trevor. <laughs> uh, so you'll see that all of <laughs> all, all not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> and and I I don't like that because what happens is it it, it takes us away from conversation and, and to build things together, right? To build together. Humor, however, as Jeannie Robertson, 84-year-old young lady, as a humorist, will say, brings us and connects us. It shares common experiences that we all can relate to, no matter what our backgrounds are. I was, uh, had a, the best day of my life back in about 1996. I was coming home from work from a great day. I was driving the family minivan. And I pulled into our driveway. I got out, took my attache case, closed the door, walked into the house, closed the door behind me, set my attache case down, walked into the kitchen where I saw my wife, Alice, and my sister-in-law, uh, May, in the kitchen. Alice was cooking, and May was sitting down by the side. They saw me walk in. I went to go give my wife a kiss and reach out for her, and she turned her face. And I bumped her on the cheek awkwardly. And I said, 
baby, what did I do? What, what happened? What's going on? And she glared at me and said, you know what you did. <laughs> now, about 80% of the time, when a woman says to a man, you know what you did, he has no clue <laughs> of what he's done. 10% of the time, he may have an idea, but he's not going to reveal what that is. Because if he's wrong, that's two strikes against him. The other 10%, he's just lying. <laughs> so I said, but I don't, you know, what's, what is going on? And May had her arms folded and crossed. Working her now. <laughs> <laughs> Popping her gum. And at the same moment, my friend Danny the Tool Man, who was a, a, a gentleman that worked at the, the local uh, hotel, came in. He says, uh, took one look at the situation, says, John, you can sleep in my basement tonight because I would not stay in this kitchen or in this vicinity with the way these two young ladies are looking at you. And I turned around and said, you know, Danny, I don't know. I'm the master of inspiration and motivation. I'm going to get my wife back in five minutes. And he said, I bet you $10 you can't. So I'm going to take that bet. So I went to my wife and I said, babe, I don't know what's wrong. And, and as soon as I said that, she comes up, she brushes by my shoulder, pushes me out of the way, walks out the door, slams the door, and he's right behind her. The whole family picture falls onto the ground. And Danny says, I'm going to take you out to, dip, to lunch today because you, that, that $10 is mine. I walk out the door, close the door as Alice gets into the minivan, May's on the other side. And she rolls the window down and I said to her, Sugar pie, <laughs> honey bunch, you know I love you. <laughs> anyway, you know what she did? <laughs> she rolled the window up. <laughs> so I decided, as she put the car in gear, to take my artificial foot and put it underneath the front tire. And when she backed up, she backed up over my foot. And I started yelling and screaming and hollering and rolling around on the ground. I heard from inside the car, May said, you just ran over John's foot. Alice jumped out of the car, came over to me and said, baby, baby, what's wrong? What's wrong? Did that hurt you or anything? And when she figured out it was my artificial <laughs> foot, a big smile came across her face. And she said, you know, you were supposed to take me out to lunch today. And it, in my stupor, I just totally oblivious forgot because I was having the best day of my life. <laughs> and then she wrapped her arms and gave this big hug, kissed me right there on my smacker. And I took her in my arms and I embraced her, I rolled around, and I looked at Dan and said, <laughs> Humor brings us together. So the next time you are doing a, a speech, consider a personal journey story that you have, like Charlotte did so eloquently today, to espionage your story <laughs> and make it something that can connect the entire audience.